What is up, YouTube? Hope you guys are having a great day today. It is a beautiful Sunday here in Pennsylvania. Look at that sunshine. It might only be 50 degrees, but the sun's out, so that's all I need. And that means today is going to be a good install because we got a fast 165 for this truck. Now, let me quickly go over sort of what the different power levels are for different GPH on the fast or air dog pumps. And by the way, you best believe your boy Mark is a dealer of both the fast and the air dog so your two main brands are going to be fast and air dog that's pretty much kind of what it usually boils down to now a lot of people say mark do you want fast or do you want air dog now i've run both and honestly they both sound great i never had an issue with either so i never really had to deal with the warranty department uh fast i kind of lean towards just a little bit because you can run larger filters like the uh cat filters that i'm going to put on this that i offer and those are just a lot bigger filter same micron rating, you can just kind of get more mileage out of them from being more immediate inside of them. Now there's three main GPHs. GPH is gallons per hour. You start with 95. This is if you have a stock truck up into 600 horsepower. So if you're never gonna go past 600 horsepower, say you're only gonna do a tune, intake, exhaust, something like that, you're never gonna touch the turbo or anything, and 95 is gonna be fine for you. Now if you wanna go past that, 600 horsepower up to 900, that's when this 165 that I have here is gonna come into play. It can take you up to 900 horsepower and 600 is about where you wanna start with it. Yeah, you can squeeze 550, 500 out of it. But when you when you put too big of a pump on a smaller truck that's not needing the fuel, you can kind of burn up the uh, pump if you put too big a one on. If you're going past the 900 horsepower range, you can go to what is the 220. Now the 220 is good for 900 plus whatever you need. And then after that, some guys will actually stack like two 165s together and all that stuff, but you kind of get the gist now of what pump is going to be right for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing opened up and show you what all is included when you get your lift pump here. And it is very important, especially with fast, is register your product. If you do not register this within 30 days of, there, yeah, it even says it right there. It is registered within 30 days. It needs to be. If not, fast will not warranty this. First up, looks like a wiring harness here. There's all of our wiring harness. Next is gonna be our fuel line, hardware, everything else you'll possibly need, fittings and all that. Another warning to register this thing, a sticker. And then underneath this bad boy, this is where the goods are. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there, 165. So we'll pull this out. And these filters I'm actually not going to use. I'll show you guys the ones I am going to run. And this is our one mounting bracket. There's a second one. Oh, right here. Second bracket down in there. And this will be just to actually mount the uh, pump to the bed here this will mount it to the bed and this will mount to here now if you've never done this before this is your first install on a lift pump in general it might take you five six hours roughly the easiest way to do this guys is honestly just for me to explain it while it's on the table here and then I'll install it all myself and then after that I'll go over it inside of the truck trying to do it while I'm installing it's gonna be just a disaster so here is the factory fast water separator Here's the cat water separator, the one I offer in the fast replacement kit. Here's your fast regular particulate filter, and here's the other filter from cat to match that. Now, if I mean, who wants to be average? Who wants to just match things up? So you best believe I'm putting this giant 1R0750 filter on. That does not even compare to the fast. This filter right here is actually what they run on the big rigs, the C15 cats and all that. So it'll be plenty of filtration plus. Let's be honest, who doesn't want to see some nice cat filters hanging down below the bed? So let's get started. First thing I like to do is go ahead and put the filters on because I really don't like these threads being exposed like that. So to get that covered up as soon as I can, that is the way to go. Now when you put any filter on, you want to make sure that your gasket has lubrication on it. A, so it doesn't stick when you're taking it off, it doesn't get stuck up here, and B, so it doesn't falsely tighten, it actually gets a smooth, nice tightness. So. I got some fresh oil in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just run around this gasket. And then this one here, I'm gonna run around there as well. And then on my nice particulate filter, get this bad boy unwrapped. 
This is literally like Christmas, guys. You don't understand. I will also get some oil on that. Just run that around the edge. So we're going to take our gasket, feed that on the top of this. Then we're going to take our water separator side. That doesn't get the draw straw with the one without it because the water will sit at the bottom of this, so you wouldn't want to suck that up. Put that on there. Yes, the gasket does seal. It may not look like it, but it actually, the gasket's deeper inside here. And then next, we'll take our particulate filter, slide that on there. And that is one fast lift pump right there. That looks awesome if you ask me. All right, so after I do that, I think the easiest thing now is to go ahead and to start installing your fittings. Now the ones like this that have the teeth on the end, those are what's gonna go into your hose right here. And when you put these on, you're also gonna want to oil these as well to make sure they slide in the whole way. Uh, this is gonna go onto the factory quick disconnect in two different places. Zip ties, your add a fuse. This is what's gonna be your trigger wire to tell the pump to turn on when the key's on. I'll show you what fuse to use for that. And this will be the mounting hardware that mounts this plate to the back of this pump. So we have a couple gaskets reducing vibration. Some of these cylinders here are what's gonna go on the mounting plate. This is what you're gonna use for your factory return. So this will actually go into the filler neck. We're gonna cut the filler neck and then this is gonna get sliced into it with these two hose clamps to hold it on there. Like yay. And then these little guys are to help hold this, whatever goes on to that, the factory line. And then we have these two guys right here that are going to go onto the pump. So this kind of looks all complicated at first seeing all these different fittings and everything, but if you break it down to the basics of what this pump is doing, it really kind of simplifies it. So let me try to explain this. Basically what this pump is doing, it's taking fuel in and it's pushing fuel out. Now you're gonna have extra, so you have a return. So right here, this port right there, the T, that's your fuel coming in from the tank. Right up top here, that's gonna be your outlet, so that goes to the engine. And whatever it doesn't use, it's gonna come out the return right there. So this will go back into the tank. So it comes in to the engine and back to the tank if it doesn't need it. Now you're gonna see extra ports, like there's an H there, I accidentally pulled the cover off it. And then there's another one right here. So these two right there, those are for if you wanna run coolant through here, something in a cold weather application to warm your fuel up. And then another port you'll see right here and here. Those are just if you wanna put electronic probes in there to warm the fuel up that way. So those are for cold weather applications, not really much to worry about. Other than those three fittings, I mean, you got this right here for your wiring harness, just plug and play, it's pretty simple. Next up is our bracket. I kinda already prepped it see right here the way it'll go on there if I can do this without losing them that'd be pretty nice all right so that is pretty much a fully ready to go pump now that's this part that isn't so fun but next up uh, I usually do the wiring second just to get that out of the way it's not really fun there's nothing fun about it so to get that out of the way is nice before you get all dirty you want to make sure you're not getting dirty hands and diesel all in the side of your truck so I'm actually going to move this over here because the lift pump is going to install on the other side of the truck so I'll flip this thing around back it in and we will get to work on it. Here's our wiring harness kind of laid out. This is gonna run to the back of the truck. It has your harness that will plug right into the harness on the pump. And then up front here, we have a positive and negative. Red's gonna be your positive, green's gonna be your negative. This goes straight to the battery. You have your fuse in here. I actually take this out. I take the fuse out while I'm wiring because I don't want to uh, actually make an accident. And then this right here is your trigger wire. So this is gonna get put to a fuse using that fuse tap that will basically come on 
when the key is on. So I'll test for different uh, fuses that get power with ignition and no power without ignition. And once we find one, we'll be good. And usually I don't really need this much wiring, this much wire in general. So I'll probably end up cutting it back some. So I'm not gonna fully put anything in yet until I actually uh, find out what my lengths are. And then right here is where the relay is gonna go in. I also don't put that in until I'm ready to go. And that's this guy right here. They also give you some electrical grease for all of your connections, which is very nice. So I use that. And they give you everything here from the fuse to go in your add a fuse, your two terminals for so your positive and negative to go right to the battery. And simple as that. First step is I wanna take this harness here that goes back to the pump. I wanna feed it down the firewall to make sure I don't forget about that and screw myself over. Now there is a factory harness that runs the whole way to the back of the truck, so that's actually just what I'm going to follow. Now on these Chevy trucks, they have these terminals that are friendly to jump stuff off of, but they're not too friendly for accessories, so they give you this little box right here. And like most, mine broke, so it's a, a one-time use zip tie on that. And that'll just be a constant 12 volt source for the power to this thing. I should see what I mean by they give you too much wiring. <laughs> like this only has to go to right there. And this right here, all of this is just to go right here. So that's why you don't kind of put all your connections at once. Roughly lay it out where you want to have it. And then you can go ahead and start uh, putting it where you want it. For the wiring, back into here I used a ground right off of that right there. The relay should be facing up like this for the sake of water not going into it. So that's all bundled up back there, all the extras. And I have my positive going to this little terminal here. So positive, negative, and then my trigger wire right here. Got my adifuse tapped on to the end here, crimped on. And I'm using this fuse right there. That guy below the blue one, above the red one, right in the middle. And that is TBC ignition, which is a 10A. So the way these things work is they give you this purple one in the kit. I believe it's a two, or no, sorry, three. So they give you that one, and the second slot, you use the fuse that was in that place. So right here, there was a 10. Now I'll just go ahead and slip that down into the spot that it was in, and I'll show you. Right now, obviously, the key is off, so the lift pump isn't running. I just went ahead and connected it so I could hear for uh, power. When I turn the key on, Not sure if you can hear that, but. So we are all set on that. All the wiring is pretty much done. Um, I won't button this up until I mount the pump and everything and know where everything's gonna lay. So right now it's just loosely running the back. Next up is to get a bed bolt out because that is exactly what that will mount to. Stop for a lunch break and it started getting dark out here, so I better hurry it up here. Now the mounting system, this is the bed bolt I just got out of there. I sprayed it down real good to make sure it came out. This is essentially how this works. This bed bolt will go up in here like this. This rubber piece will go between the bed and the mount. And then that will all sit on here. So that way you have full adjustment. You can go left, right, up, down, however you need to position this thing. You're going to have those four bolts that go right there and right there. So I'm going to go ahead get this on the truck get it all mounted up now we hit a roadblock guys this guy right here you can see on the very end of it how the threads are pretty much just gone um, when I put that in there after it started to tighten up it just chewed through all these threads right here so the problem now is basically finding a new bolt and I do not have one in metric all I have a standard in this size or close to it so I'm gonna have to wait and get a new bolt but I will definitely continue this tomorrow when I get it and just like that, like two weeks later, I finally got this thing finished up and time to actually film an outro. So this thing is finally finished up. I'll show you what it looks like on the other side here. That is our final, let's throw a light on this. That's our final look right there at it. You got the bracket put in. Uh, lines pretty much ran right where they need to be. Like I said, on this side here of the pump, that's gonna be your suction. On the two other sides, you have your return deep up in there as well as the one to the engine. So that pretty much wraps everything up on this install. Like I said earlier, if you decide after this video, like, hey, I wanna get a lift pump for my truck, whether it's a Cummins, a Duramax, a Power Stroke, 
whatever your horsepower goal is, 600, 900, or stock, go ahead and shoot me a DM at MDD Performance. That is my performance page, specifically Diesel Performance. Tons of good content on there. Even if you don't want to pump, you just want good diesel content, that's a good place to check out right there. Always putting out good posts, good stories, anything to help you guys out in the diesel industry. Because I know at first, it is super overwhelming. Ton of information. I know I was overwhelmed at first, so that's kind of the point of my me making this company, the page, the content I put out, is just to make it all just one step easier than it was for me. So guys, as always, thank you very much for tuning in, watching the install video here. I greatly appreciate it. Tons more content coming. This truck right here has a lot left in it as far as content goes. Few videos have been put out on it, so a ton more coming out on that. Thanks again as always for watching guys, and we will see you on the next video.